I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Semetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Semetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. You've heard it said, too often, no doubt, that it's a woman's privilege to change her mind. The communists I've known don't go for that theory at all. Rather than have a woman change her mind, the Reds will go to great lengths to change the woman. This practice can be dangerous for the woman and for the Reds. This story will tell you why. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sematic, Undercover Man. Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Unwelcome Hosts. Sounds very cozy and civilized, doesn't it? Everyone's having a gay old time, and why not? This is a communist cell meeting, and these happy reds are planning to liquidate an unsuspecting comrade. What could be more fun for a commie than that? <laughs> Do you imagine her face when she finds herself on the boat back to Russia for discipline? <laughs> well, let's get down to business here. The Control Commission has issued a few instructions. Oh, Comrade Loche. Oh, yes, Comrade Savetti. I'm uh, I'm still not sure why this Rostov woman is considered an enemy of the party. It really doesn't matter why, Sovetic. Moscow has informed us that she is, so she is. Well, we can't question that, but still we I... We do know this, however. Sonia Rostov was a trusted news correspondent for Soviet publications. She wangled a trip to America, presumably to cover events at the legation. But actually, it was her way of escaping from the party. But uh, are we sure of that? I'd hate to see an innocent woman punished. Do we me. doubt the word of our leaders? No, of course not. All right, then. Before Comrade Rostov left for America, she confided to one of her close friends that she intended to quit the party and become an American citizen. Why? Why? Oh, I see. And her friend informed our leaders in Russia, that it? Exactly. Now we have orders to see to it that Sonia Rostov does not become an American citizen. As a Soviet newswoman... She learned too much of party operation. As soon as possible, passage back to Moscow will be arranged for, and our job will be done. Now, uh, about these instructions from the Control Commission. Uh, here we are, Sverik. Sverik. Hmm. Oh, oh, yes, comrade. You are assigned to handle the Sonia Rostov project. Me? Why me? Naturally, I'll help in any way I can. But I don't even know the woman. And get to know her. You're familiar with the workings of our communist press. She's a part of it. Win her confidence. Make her trust you. Well, look, Comrade, I'm very flattered by all this, but after all, I'm no ladies' man. The last I... woman is a widow and alone. She probably has a few friends here. Some of them are loyal party workers who keep us informed of her activities. But since she's leaving the party for the bourgeoisie, she must be hungry for someone to trust, someone to help her. All right, Comrade. I'll help her. Good. There's a ship leaving for the Soviet in two weeks. It's up to you, Sovetic, to help Sonia Rostov to be on it. I visited Sonia Rostov at the legation's press room. She wasn't really a beautiful woman, but her smile was shy. Her deep-set eyes were large and full of memories. Her manner gentle. All this added up to a disarming attractiveness. After a few visits, our conversations came easily. Maybe she was flattered to find someone so interested in her work, or maybe she was just eager to find a friend. There. Done. Well, 
Perhaps this dispatch will please our leaders more. Haven't they been satisfied with your others? Oh, Comrade Static, it is so difficult. I am told to describe American life. Well, I write what I see. Then I am chastised for it. Why? You don't favor this capitalistic rat race, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not. But in describing the truth, one cannot avoid mentioning the store so abundant with so many foods. Well, the gleaming white appliances for cooking, the colorful fashions for women, the untroubled children. No, of course, these are all symbols of the superficial bourgeois existence. Well, sure. I hope you realize that by acknowledging them, I do not praise them. Say, I've got an idea. As long as these superficial symbols are here, let's let you and I exploit them a little. No, I do not understand. Let's have some fun at the expense of the capitalistic system. Let's squander American money on useless bourgeois entertainment. Oh, no, Comrade Fetic. The workers for the cause cannot stoop to impractical pleasure. Oh, don't be silly. I'm as loyal to the party as you are. How can you describe American life if you don't know how Americans have fun? That is true. No, really, I thank you, but I must... No. Must what? I must... <laughs> I must nothing. Good, let's go. Let's show the capitalists that communists can have fun, too. <laughs> Yes, I know. I will take the Cupid doll, please. <laughs> Say, gal, you look mighty pretty on that wild horse. <laughs> you, man, you look so funny. What's so funny about me? I was born to the merry-go-round saddle. <laughs> You're just not the time to ride a lot of this one. <laughs> Okay, here you go. Jump down. Oh. Oh. That was fun. Well, where to now? Roller coaster, snap the whip, the dodge No, nothing more now. Oh, carnivals are exhausting. Okay, let's let's sit down a bit. This bench okay? Mm, good. Matt. Hmm? Forgive me. For what? I've been thinking. Oh, forget about it. We all make that mistake. No, no, I'm serious. I've been thinking how much you enjoy all this. Sure. Don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. So very much. But Matsy's enjoyment, they, they do not contribute to the progress of our cause, do they? Oh. Well, guess we're a couple of traitors. You're not really worried, are you? Oh, Matt, there's so much fun in America. Is it wrong to enjoy things now and then? To do things just for the sake of enjoying them? No, Sonia. It's not the least bit wrong. Oh, I'm so glad, Matt. So very glad that you feel that way, too. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have dared to agree with Sonia. But under the circumstances, Comrade Loche would have to consider my attitude a part of the gag. Part of the treachery I was expected to work against Sonia. To Sonia, though, my words of agreement were an act of faith, a sign that I'd be willing to help her. And actually, that's just what I wanted to do. In spite of Loche and the other red cellmates, I was determined not to send Sonia back into the hands of the commies. She could be invaluable to the FBI in the fight against reds. I might have figured a way to save her if I'd had the time, but the next day I received an unexpected visit from Loche himself. Comrade Severic, I hate to interrupt your courtship with Sonia Rostov, but our superiors are getting jittery. Jittery? Why? I have her eating out of my hand. New orders, comrade. Moscow is displeased with the latest dispatches the Rostov woman has been filing. They want her taken out of circulation till she sails next week. What do you mean, out of circulation? She's not that dangerous. Evidently, she is, Severic. 
She'll have to be taken into custody until Take we... Take a prisoner? Why, you're crazy. We'd just be calling attention Sir to Sir Eric, I'm surprised at you. There are many party members who'd be delighted to keep Comrade Rostov for a week. Maybe even one of her own friends. Yeah, fine, fine. Naturally, we'd supply the opiates and other drugs. Drugs? You're talking like a two-bit melodrama. Would you like to see the orders yourself? They came this morning. All right, all right, I believe you. But what arrangements have been made? How am I supposed to take Sonia prisoner? That, my comrade, is your problem. I'll make sure that the other cells in this area are alerted. When you've prepared her for the trap, let me know. I'll see to it that the trap is sprung. Oh, and Sovetic. Yeah? Work fast. Our leaders want prompt action. If you can't satisfy them, I will. The whole thing was like a pulp story nightmare. But this nightmare was real. There was no time for intrigue now. If I didn't get to Sonia fast, Loche would. There was only one thing for me to do. Take the big chance. Bank on Sonia's faith in me. I went to her apartment and told her the truth. The whole commie planned to send her back to Russia. I told her to get out of town. Hi, do anything to stay out of the reach of the Reds. But she had no money. And you can't travel far on hope. So we checked through her address book, found the names of John and Myra Levitt. Sonia had met them at a ceramics course they'd all taken together. They were nice people. Mr. Levitt answered the phone. When he heard the desperation in Sonia's voice, he told her to come right over. And that's exactly what we did. Sonia, dear, you have the best room in the house. I'll fix it up with clean curtains and a new bed oh, no, spread. And... Please, no bother. Well, I can see Sonia's in good hands. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Svetik. She's in very good hands. Oh, Charlie. It's Room. It's a good room for her. I'm sure it's very comfortable. Go inside, dear. Change your clothes. Make yourself at home. Perhaps I will. I'll only be a moment. Yes, go ahead. And take your time. Oh, Mr. Levitt, did uh, your wife lock the door? Naturally, I locked the door. What would you expect? But you took the key. Sonia's in... Oh, he's here. I'll get it. Oh, we made good time. We only called him after Sonia called us. You must admit we worked fast, eh, Comrade Svetik? Comrade. Well, Svetik, I see you delivered the woman after all. Oh, Shay. What I must say, you didn't give us much warning. At least the Levitts were alert enough to call me immediately. You mean you, you came over here? Oh, if she's going to make that much noise. Don't worry, Comrade Levitt. I've brought the remedy for that. Look, you're going to keep a prisoner here? Yeah. You... The Levitts are respectable people. By the way, Comrade Svetik, just what did you tell Sonia to make her so willing to come here? Well, Sovetic, speak up. What did you tell Sonia? Now back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sovetic. And I was a communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. I was the spider, the unwilling red spider, and Sonia Rostov the fly. But my efforts to keep her out of the commie web had brought her directly into it, and I was caught there with her. I stalled while Sonia hammered on the locked door. Then the Levitts went into Sonia's room with an ominous-looking hypodermic syringe. In a few moments, she was quiet. And Loche was quizzing me again. I'm waiting, Savetic. What made Comrade Rostov so eager to come here? What did you tell her? What do you think I told her, Loche? If I'd lost her confidence, I'd never have gotten her here. So I did the only sensible thing. What did you tell her, Savetic? I told her exactly what you were planning to do to her. What? I told her you were planning to ship her back to Russia. I told her she had to hide, to get away, to disappear. Savetic, are you out of your mind? Am I? Think about it, Loche. Think hard. Sonia's in our custody now, isn't she? She's just where we wanted her, isn't she? Yes. Yes, of course she is. But if that foolhardy plan had failed... It didn't fail, comrade. If I'd thought it would fail, I never would have used it. You play a dangerous game, Savetic. Are you satisfied with the results? Yes, I... I must admit that I am. Then I'd appreciate it if you didn't find fault with my methods. I'm sorry, comrade. Frankly, I admire you. Courage, efficiency, and results. A noble combination. Yeah. 
Now, what about Sonia? Is she to stay here or what? She'll stay until it's time to put her on the ship. The Levitts will see that she's properly cared for. Oh, ah, with those sedatives? The Rostov woman is dangerous to our cause, Sovetic. What's more important, one woman's life or the progress of the Red Master Plan? I'd managed to bluff my own way out of the trap, but Sonia was still there, a prisoner of the commies. I'd hoped to avoid calling the FBI for help, but now the situation was desperate. I phoned my FBI contact, explained the problem as well as I could, and arranged to meet him that night. Still her up, sir? Yeah, it's practically empty. Regular Ethel. Ethel should get a red star for mileage. I'll take the red star, Ethel. Okay, man. What did you find out, Beaker? Can you get Sonia out of the Levitt apartment? No, man. The FBI can't interfere. Sonia Rostov isn't a citizen. Maybe the local police... No. If the cops showed up, the Reds would know someone tipped them off. Yeah, you're right. Look, Beaker. This gal isn't just a commie with cold feet. She's had a tough time. Her husband was accused of being disloyal back in Russia. He was, he was taken away like that. She stayed with the party because it was all she knew. All she'd ever been taught. Okay, Matt. We'll think of something. When she finally realized the truth about the Reds, a friend turned her in. Better check the oil. Come on. And what's more, she knows plenty about party operation. The FBI can use her information. We've got to get her out of there. Well, maybe a writ of habeas corpus would do it. Well, oil's okay. Well, how does a habeas corpus work? If a private citizen thinks someone's holding another person illegally, he has a right to make both parties come to court and prove it's all above board. Then let's file a writ. Listen, if the FBI pokes around in the case, it'll stir up suspicion. You find us somebody, Matt. A friend who's willing to file that writ of habeas corpus. And we'll see that it's served. Okay? Well, I'll, I'll try. But with commies in every corner, how do you know when a friend's a friend? <laughs> All that day and the next, I tried to think of someone who might be willing to help Sonia. I spent another day at the legation in the press room, hoping that someone there might have missed her. But I found no one I dare confide in. I was frantic for an idea, a plan of action. I decided to go to Sonia's apartment to find her address book. I had no trouble picking the lock and getting in. No trouble finding the address book either. I opened the book, looking for a name that might ring a bell when someone did ring a bell. But it wasn't the kind of bell I had in mind. I held my breath and waited. Whoever it was had given up. I waited a moment and tiptoed to the door and opened it a crack. Down the hall, just starting down the stairs, I saw a little old man carrying some freshly cleaned clothes. They were covered with those large paper wrappers used by tailors and dry cleaners. He hadn't been able to deliver the clothes to Sonia. Maybe, maybe, maybe this was my cue. Maybe this little old man was the answer. Arthritis is killing me. You look like hard work, all right. I should be an acrobat better. No? What can I do for you? It's about Miss Rostov's cleaning. Miss Rostov, huh? it's about time, I'd like to tell you. Why? Has it been very long? Listen, mister. She brings the clothes last week. She says she's got to have them Monday. Rush, she tells me. So, I break my back to have them for Monday. Nope. This is Thursday. Where is she? But well, she's staying with some friends a few blocks from here. She'd like you to deliver her clothes over there. Over there? Huh? Can't you possibly deliver them? Here, I'll give you the address. The name is Levitt. She needs them. So let her come and get them. Uh, just a minute. Hey, hey, just a minute. Yes, sir, I ain't got time to schmooze. I'm a busy man. Well, I, I, I know you are, but you've got to understand. Sonia Rostov is at this address. She needs her clothes. So she can't get away for a few minutes? No. 
That's exactly it. She can't get away. Do you understand? She can't get away. Oh. Uh-huh. What's the matter? She's sick? No. But she needs all the help she can get. You understand that? Mister, if you got something on your mind, say it. Stop talking in circles. Well, answer one question. Would you be willing to help Miss Rostov if you could? I mean, really help her. All right, all right. I'll deliver the clause on my way home tonight. Such a federal case you're making. I'll help her. I'll help her. Good. Thanks a lot. Hey, wait a minute. What? What's uh, Miss Rostov to you? Who are you, anyway? Well, the, the name is Loche. L O C H E R. Henry Loche. Speaker. Speaker, this is Red. Hi. What's up? I've got the man for you. He runs the dry cleaning shop on Sonia's block. His name is Geller. Did you explain about filing the writ? No, I couldn't take the chance. But I pumped enough curiosity into him. He knows something fishy. Now it's your turn to take over. Okay, Matt. Should I tell him the truth? Sure. He's got all the decent reflexes. Once he knows you're an FBI man, I'm sure he'll cooperate. That is, I hope he'll cooperate. I was right this time. Mr. Geller cooperated. He filed the writ of habeas corpus, and the next day I learned from the FBI that it had been served on the Levitts. Now they had to appear in court with Sonia Rostov and prove that she was not their prisoner. It looked like things were pretty well buttoned up. But that night, as I was congratulating myself, I got a sudden thought, a thought that made my flesh creep. Trapped commies do desperate things, and the Levitts were ruthless people. What if they tried to duck out on that court order? What would they do to put Sonia out of the way? I grabbed my hat and headed down to the Levitt's apartment building. From a doorway across the street, I could see the lights still burning up there in their fourth floor flat. Then, one by one, the lights blinked out. I ran for the drugstore on the corner and phoned Beaker at home. Listen, the Levitts are pulling a vanishing act. What? Wake up, will you? Okay, okay, I'm awake. Tell me again. The Levitts are about to duck out. If I called the local police, I'd have to identify myself. Call them, will you? I'll try to stall the Levitts till they get there. Okay, Matt. I'll get right on it. When I got out of the drugstore, all the lights in the Levitts' apartment were out. By the time I got to the building itself, John and Myra Levitt were just stepping into the street. They each carried a suitcase. Oh, John! Myra! Wait a minute! Hey! I almost missed you. Where are you going? Mr. Reddick, we haven't time to talk now. You'll have to excuse us. Why? What's the matter? Comrade, please, don't ask questions. Where's Sonia? Don't ask questions. Come on, John. For just a minute. Mr. Reddick, get out of the way. Where's Sonia? Upstairs in the apartment. You left her alone? Are you crazy? I'm sure Comrade Loche wouldn't appreciate that one bit. Comrade Loche, that idiot. Loche has done enough damage. Don't worry, we've reported him to the control commission. What are you talking about? Just because he can't keep his mouth shut, some tailor or somebody served a writ of habeas corpus on us. Now, now get out of the way, Sveti. We haven't much time. Well, what about Sonia? What did you do with her? Upstairs. We fixed it so it looks like she took an overdose of sedatives, sleeping pills. Now, for pity's sake, comrade, stop bothering us. Now, just a minute, Ray. You with the suit. Myra, look. Oh, no, no. Frank, there must be some mistake, officer. Mr. and Mrs. Levitt haven't done anything. Levitt, huh? That's who we want, all right. Come on, you two. We got a warrant for your arrest. Oh, officer, I'm sure that's... Never mind. Well, where are you keeping Sonia Rostov? All right. Let's go back to your apartment. No, not you, buddy. What? You heard me. You're not invited. Keep moving. <laughs> I watched them disappear into the building. Then I walked on down the street. They found Sonia all right in time to treat her for that lethal dose of drugs. She's an American citizen now and still takes her cleaning to Mr. Geller's little tailor shop. They've become good friends, too. 
Sonia and Mr. Geller. I walk by there every once in a while, hoping to catch a glimpse of them and hoping they won't see me. They'd never understand why I can't keep a friend. They'd never understand why I stay in the shadows and walk alone. Turn in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews again with the reminder that free people never have to choose their friends. Their friends choose them. In the story you just heard, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Svetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us then, won't you? Mm-hmm.